Hi everyone, welcome to my channel and today we're going to do our uh, weekly broadcast. Uh, let's look at the sky, let's see what's really happening in the sky. And as always, I want to remind us, you know, we're not here to be slave of what's happened in the sky. We're here to work together with uh, energy forces, which is was created for us in order for us to grow, for us to understand why we experience certain things. And as always, you know, what Kabbalists remind us, it's not really what's happened to us, it's how we deal with that. And no matter what's really, uh, you know, going in the world and what uh, perhaps unexpected things you can experience this week, it's all about how at that particular moment you will pause, focus, and you will try to collect all your knowledge at the same time and start to use because it's not um it's not really beneficial for your spiritual process and neither to your ancestor lineage when you study you just study and you collect so much knowledge but when moment comes you're not really using and you're falling apart which is okay we're all human being but when it's repeating himself then eventually it's look like you in a way abusing the knowledge and you're not transformed to the wisdom. So I just really kind of, I want to start a little bit like a tough conversation, which is, you know, tough love. And it's really many times a real love because when we're not really truthful to ourselves and when we, you know, um, exercise again, the spiritual conversation and we're part of the spiritual community or we, uh, you know, want to even to impress ourselves sometimes, we really need to be become more and more truthful to ourselves. We enter into the time where our intentions, our consciousness is the only assets we can have. Everything else can be gone in instant moment. And we really see what's happening in the world, how much pain and suffering, uh, what's really people going through. And no matter how much you know, it's not possible not to feel uh, pain and, uh, you know, despair what's uh, what's happening in the world. But at the same time, when you understand, uh, then it really comes from collective consciousness with, with all part of it. You know, my teacher, Rav, always said, uh, if somebody, uh, God forbid, killed on your street or something happened or somebody robbed on uh, other house in your street, don't, uh, you know, celebrate and it was in your house. Somehow you as well, with your consciousness, you didn't work enough on yourself in order for transform the energy around you. And it's really connected to all of us. We're really all in one boat. And this uh, coming week, we have a few very, very important events, uh, which is can, uh, it's like a seed for uh, many months to come. And I'm going to tell you right now what really to expect for this week. Uh, let me go just uh, day by day, and then we will going to observe the sky as well. So, you know, the start of the week, we need to look at the uh, keto. And it's really important for us to remember about the lunar nodes, because they constantly interact with the Saturn. And Saturn right now in retrograde period, and it's only four months left until November 4th, when Saturn is going to change uh, going to do stationary. Remember, stationary is one of the most difficult uh, days of Saturn because this is when we do exams. And now it's most amazing and liberating period of time for Saturn. I'm actually working on video because this is a period of time we can miss this opportunity because we're not going to experience this particularly Saturn return for another 28 years as a Saturn it's it taking 28 years to get to each sign after two and a half years uh, to be in one, but one thing we need to, sorry, one year and a half year, but what we need to remember about this particular Saturn, because he's been trying by Keto all this period of time, we're not going to, this lifetime, none of us, maybe the babies who are born right now may experience this position. Therefore, it's really important for us to understand the lessons we've been given, and it's really important because those lessons really connect to our uh, mission in life, to our passion, because remember, Saturn right now in Aquarius and Aquarius it's one of the few uh, zodiac signs we have which is uh, represent human body and when we get into the sign which is represent a human body this particular sign actually can help us to understand when the physical level in our body we're really not taken care of and we're not working on ourselves I'm going to make this video I'm working I already finished my notes God willing, for the end of the day, I will post new video about Saturn. Please look for it, because this particular video, it's really the key. 
Everything else what's happened is the secondary. The Saturn, what's happened with Saturn right now, it's most important really thing for us. If you take this seriously, if you really make your notes, and you come back to my initial video about Saturn retrograde for 12 signs, I'm just will re remind you what's happened when he's... Uh, so when Saturn was changed the position and changed the sign from Capricorn to um, Aquarius, but now then he started his retrograde in July and he's going until November. This is the period of time. There's a key. There's a there's a, such an amazing uh, opening window, a cosmic opening for all of us. It's very very karmic period when Saturn in Aquarius because it's all about humanity. It's all about age of Aquarius. And the way, uh, what kind of work we're going to do, how much energy, what community we're looking for, and the decision we must make, must, absolutely must. There's no, we have no choice. We need to go out of comfort zone. So I'm going to uh, post this video uh, by end of this day. So let's come back to this week. So uh, on August 15th, we have Keto, it's Quintus Neptune in the three degree in Libra. And, uh, you know, Keto, Keto uh uh, the North Node, it's in Libra, and um, we have uh, Neptune in Pisces, which is his little bit, uh, even though he's in own house, but he's uh, out of control, what's happening right now with water and what's really coming soon. And we need to, as always, we need to remember, because this uh, North Node, it's uh, connect to, um, you know, it's connect to our past life, to our skills, what we really brought to the scene this lifetime. And when we have a uh, Neptune right now interact with that, it can provide us some illusion of reality, what we see. So we need to understand what is the intuition and what the illusion. Okay, we're going to come back to that. Now, in August 16, major event happening. We have new moon in 29 degrees. I'm going to show you. And this new moon have many, many secrets. And um, I can explain a little bit more in details. Then we have another thing. We have Uranus on August 16 trying Mars. And um, even though it's trying, it's going to be so many interesting surprises for humanity. Continue. And then we have in August 20th, we have Sun. Quintus Neptune, and uh, very important uh, because this uh, the Neptune have few inter important interactions this upcoming week, and again it's going to connect to water and everything what what represent water in our reality. And uh, one thing I didn't mention: August seventeen, very important event as well. We have a Sun enters Leo, and I want to wish Mazal Tov. I want to wish you happy birthday to all the amazing, magical Leos. I love you guys. You you absolutely uh, such an important energy to humanity right now. The leadership, the excitement, the excitement for life. This is what people missing. Please keep going. Give this energy and know how to receive the love. Right? Very very important. It's, uh, you know, we're all going to feel uh, energy of Leo inside of us. The sun is going to be in full exaltation. It's going to be the highest of the highest. This is the time of the sun of the whole entire year. We need to know how to use our energy, how to use restriction of reactive system, how to use the fire to make a food, but not to burn the house. Because the same fire can create so much destruction and the same fire can create nourishment. Therefore, it's really important to have a vessel because when you have a fire, then you have an intermediate vessel and then you have a water inside. This is called three-column energy. You understand? So this is why it's important. We came to this world to balance our vessel. So when we have a plus and minus, and there's no mean intermediate, there's a short circuit. But when we create the vessel, the uh, the filament, which is the restriction to ferret, right, from the triangle of reality, this is when we know how to benefit from this tremendous energy. Really, really important. Okay, so let's go right now to step by step. I uh, start in visually, you can see right now, August 13, because I'm making videos always on Sunday. We can see uh, our beautiful moon in 28 degrees, and she almost interact with Pluto. Uh, even though it's Sunday, uh, you probably a little bit feel this, uh, perhaps a little bit uh, low energy today, because, uh, you know, uh, moon preparing to get to her own sign of cancer, and this is where they actually... The new moon actually going to be in uh, 29 degrees in Cancer. I'm going to show you guys. 
even though she's going to touch Leo as a direct sky, we're going to look at that. What else we have here? Look what's interesting stuff we have here. We have um, on top of the moon, she's uh, almost in, uh, you know, in a position with uh, Pluto in Capricorn. This is why she feels a little bit, a little bit uncomfortable. We have uh, Mars uh, retrograde preparing to enter to Virgo, which is a positive event. It's going to be this week. And we have uh, Venus. She's um, she's invisible in a sense. She's, uh, she's right now in the retrograde. And this is why, especially for women, I recommend really take care of yourself. Take your time for meditation. Take your time to go to women's cycle, uh, circles. Go to yoga. Go for a walk. Anyone who feel, even for male, there's a lot of males, they have a tremendous high level of uh, female energy. And some woman has more male energy than female energy. It's uh, We all came here to balance both of them. Because in front of the creator, according to Kabbalah, we're all vessels. We're all females in front of the creator. But in this dimension, we all have a polarity of female and male energy. So now then Venus... She's in retrograde. She's not really here in a way to support us, right? To the goal, you see? And look, she's right now completely blind and covered, invisible under the sun. She's um, she's literally uh, in the conjunction with sun, okay? So this is why you probably feel very important to breathe. Take your time. Uh, before you make any decisions, before A, you're going to express yourself, make sure you're coming from place of balance. This is the key. Then you will have a different outcome because our future, it's now. Any decision we make, the way how we think, how we look at these things, this is what we create. Our reality, every second we create. Whatever we did yesterday, whatever we plan tomorrow, it's not relevant. The way how atoms work around us is soon the atoms who are around us because we energy. We attract exactly what we produce. Bottom line, you understand? So no matter... If you pray, if you 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 know you read Zohar every day, you um you know you uh, you showing yourself like you know in a good light, it's excellent. But if the mo we're talking about the moment, the split second, how we make decision, and always remember what's happening around us. It's a limited reality. It's a limited movie we see. Many things behind the scene we don't see. We need to take this to the account. And therefore, we need to trust the creation. We know if you did on your part the best you could do at the moment you are at, rest, you just really need to let it go. The power of let it go. We're not talking about let it go and not do anything. Mm -mm -mm -mm. We live in the Malchut. It's our responsibility, our birthright to practice here to be creator. But at the same moment, when the difficulties arrive or complication in front of you, the moment is always about to pause and then to act. And while you're acting, you always keep in mind there's no right or wrong. You, you're trying to apply the tools and do your best. Very, very important. Let's move to 14 to um, Monday. So Moon already uh, moved to a sign of cancer. She's here. You know, uh, one of the things we'll remember, even though Moon represents cancer, it's not the, uh, always the best position, especially for people who feel oh, a little bit overwhelmed emotionally. So just remember that this particular day, don't do um, too many tasks. Just take it easy, okay? But at least we have... Um, Moon gonna interact very very soon. She's gonna pass Venus before the new moon, and Venus invisible. So this is why I I'm just telling you it's gonna be an interesting new moon to say the least. And as I said, um, we have a kettle. Remember I told you the kettle we have over here, a fourth degree. She's interacting. We she already started the conversation with Neptune, and of course uh, Rahu not far here. Now we're moving to August fifteen really important uh, you can see mars preparing for uh, entering to virgo he's already start to touch and mars remember mars and mercury right now both not in most positive degrees in leo uh, they they produce in uh, conflicted energy and as well we can feel in our health headaches inflammations we can feel a little bit dizzy we cannot focus it's all part of it guys okay so don't blame yourself 
uh, like I said, do exercise because there's nothing like exercise, nothing like movement because the serotonin can be activated only through movement. There's, they didn't even create yet pills except this, uh, like a drugs to replace serotonin. We, you need to make it effort in order for you to produce this happy hormone. So make it effort. So you feel down, walk. You soon something, just go, go physical, body need this. Then you right away coming out from the place, from this portal, you enter into another portal and go to nature. It's really, really important, okay? Let's move to very important day. Let's move to August 16. I'm going to do August 16, uh, 4, 5 a.m. I'm going to do 5 a.m. Let me refresh and let's see what's happened with the moon. August 16, 5 a.m. Okay. Look what's happened here. 29 degree in Leo. We have uh, sun starting uh, his uh, new position to Leo. You can see 29 degree and we have a moon. This is a really important moment. I do recommend for you guys this particular day on August 16 to wake up early in the morning. Like really make it effort to wake up early in the morning. And by the way, look what else we have, 28 degrees uh, and, tw and 30 degrees. Every Everybody interact with the moon, moon checking of everyone. And um, Uranus, I want us to understand what Uranus is doing here. We see it's 28 degrees. It's basically Uranus um, squaring moon and sun. So potentially in the sky, it's showing us some event potentially can happen. Remember, our mind, very powerful. With the power of prayers, with changing certain behavior, you only you know what struggle you have, what exactly the repeat, repetition of the same thing, you're trying to work on it. So really take this more seriously. This is a complex new moon. But the good news, the, you know, in the moon calendar in Hebrew, we're entering to a period of time, you may Shiva, the times of rep repentance. We're preparing for Rosh Hashanah when our souls are going to be judged in front of creation. We're going to, every year, uh, we're doing exams in front of creation, the evaluation of what's done, and how much we prepare ourselves for the next level. So this is the start. On the, uh, early in the morning, on 16, 5 a.m., if you can, I strongly recommend wake up, uh, do your brachot shachar. I don't think, well, man knows the time. They cannot start full prayers yet because it's a different time. It needs to be something, I think, 7 o'clock. But 5 o'clock, if you have a Zohar, or you can go to the link on each video, I have linked to full sets of Zohar. You can go to zohar.com. And I want to thank Kabbalah Center to provide these tremendous tools. You can always order Zohar. It's really good to have Zohar at home. And really study. And study whatever wisdom you believe, whatever study. study. Ask your personal angel, which is in Hebrew. It's called Mochin. It's come from word Moch, your mind, your brain. Ask, talk to your spirits, uh, talk to them, ask them to support you for this upcoming month because we're entering to super important period of time. It will determine uh, our year to come, literally. Okay, so definitely take this seriously. Uh, there's a lot of tools, there's a lot of prayers which is connected to new moon. I just want to remind you guys when Creator, before, uh, uh, you know, when Torah was uh, decided to give into Am Israel to 12 tribes, we're not talking about Jewish people. We're talking about at the time of receiving the, the Torah, there was the whole world knew about animal kingdom, mineral kingdom, anyone. If you feel that you belong to 12 tribes and you connect to the Torah, you connect to Zohar, to Kabbalistic knowledge, you're part of the deal. And what's really important for you to remember, uh, there's a reason why Creator gave us the first blessing is the blessing of the new moon. Remember, we have 613 precepts. It's not really precepts, mitzvot, it's a, it's a recommendation of the creation, a rules of creation, right? Um, you know, the for example, Christianity, they have 10 commandments. But again, it's not exactly how it translates. Uh, but, uh, you know, if you consider yourself Am Israel, part of the tribes, and you work on your center column energy to combine uh, both left and right column energy, it's really important for you to study to understand what is the 613 mitzvot, 
the uh, laws we have and the first one was given to the blessing of the new moon so you can imagine how powerful it's important because the creator always knew of the seed of the moment of the new moon and the new moon was really given to us as a protection she's the female 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 side energetical and she's constantly fluctuating right constantly change the energy it's uh, you know she's it's like a woman going through the cycles and the ups and downs of the moon mood but the soon more a woman become more spiritual and she knows how to balance her energy everyone in home become more healthy everyone at home become more balanced and i don't want to put right now woman in spot but at the same time i just want to remind the responsibility of spiritual woman at home how much your energy even before you say anything, your presence, if you balance, if you teach your children and you're showing your husband as the best example, because the strong woman is not the one who makes comments about everything or um, trying to fix things. It's how she, so to say, um, doing the tango with her energy, how she, with her own self, with how she balance and love in nature and nourish nature. This nature can, it's, um, you know, it's transformable to everyone around you. So it's really important. Let's move forward. Just just for you to guys to know, extremely important day. The whole August 16, start, try to stay really on, on your best mindset. Remember, mind over matter. Uh, our thoughts create reality, right? Um, it's really, really important. Uh, let's move to 17. They go, we have a 17. Now we can see as well our beautiful Mars in 29 degree. And remember, uh, when what's happened with the moon, because she's moving, move, uh, she moved from, from water to fire. She's uh, still in a complex energy. And now we have a sun already completely in Leo. And he's going to start to produce a lot, a lot of energy for us. So we just need to know how to deal with that. Now, moon. And 17, actually, literally, uh, she's actually Regulus. She's not far from Regulus. It's really, really special star. It can help us really to open our hearts. So it's actually a lot of support. Now, Mars moving a little bit uh, uh, further from uh, Venus for now. And he's entering to um, Virgo. I will make another video because it's extremely important Mars. It's actually positive Mars. It's, he's going to help us to be more on time more organized and definitely when mars moved to virgo or for all 12 signs we need to understand what part of the body it can be triggered and how it's important for us to prevent and this period of time is always i remind you there's so much natural medicine herbs i always encourage you to study to reconnect uh when i do reading i usually according to the chart i can tell you uh, i can recommend what herbs really can help you and by the way, this period of time, um, this month, I recommend for you guys do your uh, solar return or your uh, progress chart. It's extremely important in order to prepare for the lunar nodes when they're going to change and when going to change the Saturn when he's going to, you know, change his position as well. Extremely, extremely important. Okay. Uh, let's move forward uh, to 18. Uh, move. Um, moon uh, still in leo she's basically in leo uh most of this week uh, after this she moved from cancer and uh, you know uh, mars already getting 30 degree and it's already touching uh direct sky a fixed sign of virgo so it's really really important what else will happen let's not forget about um, uh, beautiful beautiful jupiter and the jupiter by the way you know he's um He's a far from Rahu, thank God. But in the same time, because the same sign, we don't feel so much support from Jupiter, which is if he will be by himself all this period of time. But again, there's a reason for it. Uh, really, uh, cosmos preparing us for a new world, for for new understanding of things. It's a reality which is, was always waiting for us. We were just choose not to look at the reality. And now we're going to face more and more what money represents for us, what food represents for us, how much really money we make, how we're going to make our money. Do we really need such a big house? Do we really need to to eat um, dead animal meat? 
do we really need to interact with certain people or interact certain way? We, we literally, uh, we will need to reborn again. We need to finish our tikkun. We need to finish the assignment for this lifetime now in order for us to start new journey and to be prepared for 2025. Because what's going to happen with 2025, uh, between Neptune, between Jupiter, between it's it's going to be... Um, um, the last time, it was in the beginning of 18th century, and I will make a separate video about 2025. We need to know what waiting up on us and how, what kind of vehicle we need to have in order for us to uh, to be successful in the years to come. Okay, let's go further. So it's a Friday. Uh, we're preparing for Shabbat, the energy of Shabbat. And we're going right now to Shabbat, which is August 19th. The moon enter Virgo and moon just passed Mars. So this whole week is going to be emotional week. And what I really mean by emotional, it's not uh, we need to nourish ourselves. We need to understand this is the week where you don't make many important decisions. Even though this is usually a new moon, it's recommended you can do like a new beginning. But this new moon, it's a little bit complex. Make sure the people who interact in the business at home, they're on the same page. If you see somebody out of alignment, a little bit nervous or a little bit uh, sensitive to things you say or whatever happened around, just give people space. And if you need space, open conversation. You know what? I really feel right now I need help. Uh, I need space. I hope it's okay with you. So it's, it's okay to have... Um, you know, uh, open conversation with your partner, with people who you live. It's really important. They need to, they cannot guess and then to see your reaction and uh, likewise with uh, with your partner. Always have an open conversation. It doesn't need to be long conversation, just short, but intention. Always with a loving eye. Remember, no matter what you're saying to anyone, no, no matter what message you want, uh, you want to pass, try to be creator, be creator. Look with the loving eye. The other soul will feel it. And the other soul will know whatever you're saying is not just for you to get benefit from what you want the outcome. You actually care about the person who in front of you. This is really important uh, tools, okay? Now, uh, five degree in, in Virgo. It's actually interesting degree, degree for moon to be, even though moon doesn't like to be in Virgo because, you know, it's Mercury uh, environment and, you know, it's all quick about logic, about to be on time, about the, uh, you know, the quality of things, so, certain precise. And moon, she loves when, you know, you give her her own freedom. So, but good news because it's Shabbat and it's, by the way, very important Shabbat, Shoftim, uh, you know, the judges, uh, the Torah portion, I really encourage you for you guys to study. There's so many secrets. Um, I really, really recommend. I'm, by end of this video, I'm going to put a short video of my teacher, Rav, which is connected to the energy of the week to come, of the Shof team. So hopefully it's going to give you this, you know, the DNA, the energy, because when we listen to Kabbalists, when we listen to someone who already in this reality completely uh, on this reality, not affected by this reality. By living in this malchut, the, the Kabbalists knew how to pray in other dimension and how to see past and future. And by looking at you, the, you know, the righteous soul never judge you. Opposite, they give you or chokhmah by looking in your eyes, the, uh, the light of wisdom. And they never tell you what to do. They always just only with the energy they give you so much love and so much belief system in you then you have no choice you suddenly realize my god i can do much more and you're going to feel about yourself so it's important to listen to kabbalists to find the teacher to to study to constantly elevate your soul this is really food for your soul which is you came really to uh to learn in this limited reality in this dimension and the last day we have august which is uh, sunday august 20th moon uh, still uh moon still in virgo and uh she um she interact she's in opposition with pisces she's soon going to interact um uh, she's going she's going right now and then by the way on uh, monday and tuesday it's going to be excellent days because she's going to be in Libra and she's going to be in a position with Jupiter. But even when, when she's in a position in Jupiter for a week to come, I like it 
uh, she's going to have still a lot of nourishment and divine inspiration. So this is great. And of course, you know, remember, we already have uh, Mars one degree in Virgo. Congratulations, Virgos. It's uh, definitely weak. The whole period of time Mars going to be in Virgo, it's going to be extremely important for you, Virgos. And not mention uh, the whole month of repentance, Elul, it's called in Hebrew, the month of Virgo, which is uh, in the Hebrew calendar, in the uh, Kabbalistic calendar we, we're entering. We're going to have a Mars. Mars is going to help us to work on our spirituality even more, which is, I love it. I absolutely love it. We're going to have a lot of support from Mars because I love when Mars and Virgo, we become more productive, more aware, more focused. We just need to know how to use this energy. Okay, guys, I think, um, oh, by the way, and one thing I want to mention, we have a, we have a finally, um, Venus, you know, she's becoming more visible. She's in zero degree and uh, she's slowly, uh, you know, coming out by interaction with Leo, which is great. Okay, so we're going to have more support. Okay, guys, I think it's all what I wanted to say this week. I mean, for this particular week, I will make another video on Saturn. And as well, I'm going to make another video on Mars for 12 signs. Okay, so please look for the next few videos, guys. As always, I want to wish you many blessings. Let's work together. Let's pray for each other. Let's uh, constantly, uh, you know, wish each other only the good things. And if you have uh, conflict with anyone, before you, you think and analyze and create another movie, just send love. Just talk to the soul because soul has nothing to do with uh, with this illusion what we're all going through okay this is always the what kabbalists uh, recommend for us talk to the soul before you're going to talk to the uh, body of the tonight we are in the month of elul also uh, known as the month of Virgo and in Hebrew Betula. We know that this month of Virgo, month of Elul, is a month that can support and assist us when the time of Rosh Hashanah rolls around that we can be in a better position to exercise some degree of control over the events that will be taking place in the coming year. Before we can make any progress, any progress in somehow having a dominion over the the events that will particularly affect us without the knowledge without the knowledge of the cosmic effects and influences over our environment and over our lives in particular then we will then have to continue as we have for 2000 years without any hope of changing the events and uh, despite our egos despite the um, feelings that most of us have that as long as it looks like we're in control we're always in control of course we're always in control until the day that we are no longer in control and that day has always come in the history of mankind but somehow Satan does an excellent job and plays a uh, does a good number on us and always convinces us that uh, who is not in control and who does not decide the events of the future. But without a consciousness, without a consciousness at acceptance, and here I say acceptance, we must surrender. I say you don't have to surrender to religion, you don't have to surrender to God. But there's one surrender that is required before you can move any further, and that is a surrender to the and acceptance that you are and I are and we all are not in control of our lives. Certainly we're not in control of our health because uh, nobody can tell 
illness when to uh, take a holiday. Certainly we are not in control of, uh, of our finances, of our relationships, because uh, things happen uh, when we make every effort to avoid the pitfalls. Then what is left? Where do we actually exercise some control? The answer is we do not have control. However, the Zohar and the uh, teachings of Kabbalah provide us with a methodology by which after we have accepted the idea that our 4%, 3% Satan consciousness, the consciousness that we're usually operating with, is not, is not the idea that that provides us with uh, decisions, provides us with the um, know-how to control our lives. With that in mind, that we do not want to surrender to Satan's consciousness of the three, four percent rational mind, then we uh, we then can achieve some degree, some measure of of uh, an ability to make use of the 94 or 95 or 96 percent that is available that unfortunately for the most part we do not avail ourselves therefore what we uh, our intention this evening is to learn as much as we possibly can concerning the the influences of Virgo and of course Mercury which rules over the planet of this month which rules as the planet of this month and rules over Mercury now, I'm sorry rules over uh, Betula Virgo this month is also referred to as Elul Elul now who established the month of Elul and where in the Torah is it mentioned and again, I just want to caution you in case we had forgotten that we can never, and I use the word never, we could never exercise any degree or measure of control over our lives if we do not have knowledge, because knowledge is the connection. Referring always to the verse number four, chapter number four, verse one in Genesis, which says that Adam knew Eve and she became pregnant. And of course, it sounds a little uh, illogical that just by knowing Eve, she became pregnant. And therefore, the Zohar goes on to explain that the Hebrew word for uh, knowing, the Hebrew word yada, is actually connection. Because they're placing the word yada, knowledge, information, in a frame of intercourse, meaning connection. Therefore, we assume, says the Zohar, from that verse that only the knowledge only knowing can produce a connection only knowledge can produce a connection therefore it is essential that before we can achieve any measure of control that we know that we know therefore our first question this evening is where is and why is this month referred to in by its Hebrew name Elul and where is it mentioned in the Torah? Well, there is only one place in the Torah where, it's, where the word Elul is found, and that is in the book of Nehemiah. Nehemiah, who lived during the time of the Second Temple, and in chapter 6, verse 15, it mentions the word Elul concerning the completion of the Holy Temple. Where it says, And the wall was finished on the 25th day of the month of Elul. And it only took 22 days, says the verse, for this wall to be completed. Now why is it so essential that we know how long it took to build that wall? And uh, why does the fact the prophet have to mention the idea that it was finished after 52 days? What would have happened if it was 53 days or 51 days? 
I don't believe any of us would have had any objection to its uh, time frame, and I believe less concerned with how long it took. And so we leave that question in abeyance because, again, for those of us who still believe that reading the Torah and, of course, prophets uh, superficially and believing that we can uh, achieve some degree of knowledge is greatly mistaken, according to the Zohar, because the entire Torah, including the prophets, is written in code. And therefore, 52 means something else. Elul means something else. Everything that says in the Torah means something else. And I know to some of you who are new to Kabbalah may be asking them, why, why write Morse code in it? in the first place why not make it clear but then you'd have to go back to the Morse code and say why couldn't they devise some better method than just uh, through a coded message but there are reasons and that is also explained and that is not what we'd like to discuss this evening but nevertheless these are all clues to assist us in understanding what makes things happen why these things happen and why do they affect my life as they do? So we have the word Elo. Now the word Betula. Betula is the Hebrew word for Virgo. Betula means Virgo. Why would, and where did, and how did this word originate to be fer referred to as this month that, uh, that precedes Rosh Hashanah? Virgo. Couldn't they give it another name? The name originates with Abraham, the, the patriarch, when he authored the book known as the Sefer Yitzirah. Sefer Yitzirah, the book of formation, in which he designates this particular month as the Hebrew month of Bitula, Virgo, Virgin. Why, why such a name to, to such a month? Certainly there was no lack of Hebrew words that could also be used to connect this month with whatever Hebrew word we uh, Abraham had chosen but obviously again by Abraham choosing the word Virgo he provided us with a wellspring of information that we can make use of that we can take advantage of and not take advantage of just just to accumulate more knowledge but how we can make use of this information in changing our destiny I say changing of our destiny <clears throat> for those of us who are confident that we can change our destiny then I'll use the word to improve our well-being but in any event this is why this information was furnished by Abraham the patriarch as well as the Zohar another feature concerning this month of Virgo which is ruled by Mercury are the is the information that Abraham provides in the book of uh, formation the Sefer Yitzirah that what created these months in other words the moment that Abraham s stated that what created the month of El what do you mean uh, there's a creation of the month of El it's time following July is August and you count according to the uh, to the uh, month, if you're in the he following the lunar month of uh, of uh, Islam or the lunar month of uh, Judaism, which also combines at times with the solar system, but one month naturally follows the next month. Why did Abraham say that certain letters created Virgo? Certain letters created the the uh, celestial body known as Mercury created insofar as Mercury is concerned yes we see suddenly an entity but how do we associate time as an entity and therefore we learn from the words of Avraham Avinu that time is also an entity a physical entity although you can't touch it maybe you can't touch time but know that time as we know it is not something which is abstract but rather 
There were forces that created this entity, despite the fact that for us to observe time in a physical sense seems to be obscured. Nevertheless, the fact that we do not observe it does not indicate that it does not exist. Therefore, Avram Avinu, when he says that a letter created the month of Virgo, created this month of Elul, he was referring to a structure, a physical structure, despite the fact that the naked eye cannot see it. Just like years ago, we couldn't see the naked DNA. Years ago, we could not observe the atom, subatomic physics, without a telescope. So in other words, the eye by and within itself is not a sufficient instrument to be able to detect. Therefore, the idea of, of the month as time, as a force, a physical force, as well as obviously a uh, celestial or metaphysical force, is a reality. And therefore, Abraham provides us with those two letters, the Resh and the Yud. The Resh created the planet Mercury, and the Yud created the month of Elul, Betula, Virgo. Why these two particular letters? Because these two particular letters instill what this month represents, and we shall shortly come to its definition.